Yeah, so hi again. Uh, I'm working with Fortinet, as uh, I have been introduced, um, but I'm a malware an analyst, actually. So uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. First, um, a side note. It's for those who are uh, working on the war game, you might be interested in this. Um, I don't know if you noticed for, for first that there was a reference to La Nuit du Hack in some comic strips at uh, Styx Challenge. If you did not, well, have a look at them again. And then it's just another hint for the war games, well, to keep uh, an eye on my slides, uh, possibly two. <laughs> Um, and they will be distributed afterwards, of course. So, back to the topic, criminal profiling. Um, basically, it's plenty of stats on Android malware. Um, feel free, of course, to tweet them, um, take pictures or whatever you want to do about this. I would, of course, appreciate that you tweet them correctly because it's so difficult to um, to get statistics correct. So as much as possible, well, be careful about uh, how it is. Um, the, the, the way they are computed is important because it really matters. So actually, how did I compute those statistics? Some of you might have heard about a project I've been working on and I've presented some other times, which is called Sherlock Droid. And um, what happens is that it's an Android marketplace crawler. It gets plenty of Android packages. And in there, I've got like a big script that is analyzing and grabbing properties from the Android packages. So it will get plenty of information from the Android packages from the file itself, its size, um, the hash, whatever. Um, it will uncompress it and grab some other properties from the manifest. So the permissions which are asked, but not only that, how many receivers, things like that. The certificates the Android application is being signed with. The resources inside those looking for ARM executables and seeing properties inside those. Um, decompiling the um, uh, Dalvik executable and grabbing some properties from the disassembled or decompiled code. That's where we get all the properties. All of this analysis is static. So I have 289 properties which are grabbed that way and that's how I computed the stats. If you want to know no more, well, you'll have to look at those uh, conferences where you'll find some more on Sherlock Droid. The data set. So basically, we are close to having stats on one million of Android malware. Those are taken from Fortinet's database. Um, those are unique samples, so the duplicates are removed, of course. Um, it's non-damaged samples, but not always complete samples. Sometimes we only have, for instance, the Dalvik executable but not the manifest. And what's very important there is um, that I have only very few clean applications to compare with. As you can see, it's uh, something like, yeah, uh, 13,000 clean applications compared to one million of malware. That's very low. Why so few? Well, because it's very difficult to be sure an application is clean. Uh, actually, when I get some incoming samples that I have to analyze, I always hate those which are clean because I have to look for hours to be sure in every corner that I'm not missing something and that it's not malicious. So it's very difficult. So we got those clean applications from some samples that we analyzed and, um, well, found to be clean. Some others we took from some open source repositories, thinking that as the code could have been reviewed, they were more likely to be clean, but it's not entirely sure. So it's an approximation we have done there. 
Okay. And as I said, well, they're non-damaged samples, but nevertheless, I'm not always able to grab properties on exactly that million of samples. There are some properties which are only, I'd say, for instance, on certificates of the application. And if I don't have the certificate, well, obviously, I cannot compute statistics about that certificate. Okay, so that's why in some cases I fall back to like 600,000 uh, uh, samples which have been analyzed instead of one million. Still an enormous lot, of course. Oh yeah, I was going to forget that one. It's also only properties which are taken on the malware, well, the malicious parts themselves, the malicious code, and not the third party kits. So if the malware is shipping with, I don't know, um, uh, Google uh, Ads, Ad Mobs, or um, uh, Development SDK, well, we're not going to grab any properties from that part of the code. So that's important. So yeah, what's really, I'd say, striking here, so is the number of uh, Android malware we have been analyzing, one million. Uh, it's really much more than um, in several research papers I have seen. Sometimes it's only over 100 or 1,000. Uh, nowadays, that is too few to uh, be able to do some profiling on the Android malware because we have over 1 million uh, malware on Android. Uh, also, it's all the malware uh, up to March 2015, which are included in this study. Um, this is because, well, there were some other uh, prior research like the Android malware genome you probably heard of, but it's like a little bit outdated. It's back 2011. That's only four years, but for Android malware, it is outdated. It's a little bit more like some other research which has been done on um, Android uh, applications such as uh, by Playdrone, they did a lot of stats, very interesting paper on stats from, for uh, Android packages. Um, but those are for both, well, not malware specifically, it's any Android application. Here, it's only focusing on malware. Okay, so let's get down to profiling. So I've got a very nice uh, and nasty green virus. And he says, I'm smaller and simpler. Does it show? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. If we have a look at the size, the first thing that, you know, jumps into sight is that um, a clean application is, on average, like 3.2 megabytes of size. And a, a malware is, like, a little bit less than the half of that size, 1.5 megabytes in average. And if we have a look at the size throughout time, actually, this is increasing. Nowadays, so like end of 2014, um, well, clean applications are four times bigger than malware. This is obviously because, well, malware don't need to implement all features of uh, clean applications. They just need to implement the malicious stuff. It's simple, more simpler also in the ways they're implemented. If you have a look at Android activities, well, um, we have something like only five activities on average for malware and nearly 11 for clean applications. So activities in Android, I don't know if you know exactly what that is, but basically it looks like uh, um, uh, every screen or, yeah, window of, uh, of the application that you'd see on the, on the phone. The other two services are, and receivers are closer to each other. Some other thing that our nasty virus lo loves to do is read our SMS and send SMS, install applications and shortcuts. So, here, what I did is um, 
get some percentages of um, what malware likes to do and what clean applications like to do. So on the, the x-axis there, you've got what malware, the percentage from, uh, of malware that are grabbing, uh, doing this or that. And on the vertical axis, you've got what uh, the percentage of clean applications. So basically, if you don't, you cannot read the figures really precisely on the slides, at least you can hopefully see the colors. If it's red, it strongly indicates something that malware like to do. And if it's green, it's something that clean applications like to do. So what we see is, for instance, that, well, listening to um, an SMS, it's 56% of malware which are doing that against only 3% of clean applications. So it's really a, an enormous gap there. Sending SMS, also 43% of, uh, of malware are doing it. Hiding SMS by the call of that specific uh, function abort broadcast, about 30% doing it. On the contrary, if we have a look, yeah, um, on um, HTTP, post, so sending some information via HTTP, well, we see that both malware and clean are doing it. So that's why it's not so red, but it's high up in the diagram. Some, th some other things, well, it says camera, vibrating, sending emails, but not interested. Yeah, we'll have a look at what malware like to do. So some other things besides sending SMS or reading or incoming SMS, well, they like to install packages. To do so, they like to use, particularly, we've got a property for that, for uh, install packages permission. They like to, be, to, to, to do that. 24% are doing it against only less than 1% on clean applications. This is actually stupid most of the time, because um, using that particular permission on Android will only work for system applications. It's not because you're, you've got install packages permission on your normal uh, application that you'll be able to install it, or to install other ones more precisely. Installing shortcuts is also something they seem to be li to, to like to do. So over 20%. Some other surprises, though, is things that they don't like to do. I thought that perhaps, you know, sending emails about, I don't know, exfiltrating our data via emails would be something that they would like to do. It turns out that not. They are not exfiltrating most of the time our data via emails, but actually much more uh, frequently via HTTP, uh, responses, and particularly, actually, they seem to favor JSON objects in, the, in that cases. Um, we have some other things that they don't like to do, like vibrating. Vibrating could have been interesting for ransomware, for, for instance, if your phone keeps vibrating, that will for sure be very annoying, and you might want to pay the ransom to stop it. We haven't seen that yet. Um, dialing premium, uh, premium phone numbers also is something they do, do not do, or not that much, more precisely. Um, don't get confused. They do send a lot of SMS to uh, premium phone numbers, but not call them, a slight difference. Uh, using the camera, well, uh, could have been uh, useful perhaps for spyware but they're not doing that that much. I guess it would be only interesting if we are a very important person, which we are not. And disabling the key guard, well, um, they have no interest in that because that's just uh, to unlock the screen, to have something run, and malware can just run services in background and it will do just the same thing. So no, no use for that. Finally, permissions. Give, give me all your permissions, that verse says. Oh, yeah. 
well, we've got a clear difference again between the number of um, permissions which are uh, asked by the malware. Uh, malware are requesting over 17 permissions on average, average. So some of them much more, some of those uh, fewer, of course. And clean applications, on average, it's only six. So there's really a big difference there. So um, those are the top few permissions that um, malware are requesting. There's no real surprise probably on, on this. Um, internet is, of course, one of those they like to, uh, to, to ask for very often. But uh, clean applications also like to, to get the internet's uh, permission. Um, so on the slides there, you've got yeah, the percentage for malware in red, for clean in green, and the difference is in yellow. So what we're really interested in is those permissions with a high level of yellow, which we can see, for instance, for, again, those send SMS permissions or read SMS permissions. Um, a lot of uh, research works like actually to, um, to focus very much on uh, analysis of permissions. But to be honest, I'm not sure that's such a good idea because permissions are not that reliable. And I'm going to prove here why. On those graphics, you've got the first, few, the first two bars, which are the percentages applications are requesting a given permission. And then the next two bars is how much they are actually using that permission. And as you can see, for instance, for the call permission, whereas there's a huge difference between how many malware are actually requesting the permission and those who are really using it. So you can request plenty of permissions. If you're not using it, well, it's just that you don't know how to implement. You're a bad, uh, bad coder, but uh, it's not really a, a malicious issue. And you'll probably notice, I have the other pointer here. Um, around there, we've got the device administrator permissions. And it's a bit strange, you'll uh, tell me, because in that case, we have more applications which are actually using device administrator uh, functionalities than those which are requesting it. Why? So, the answer is that um, our data sets here, um, we have quite a few malware for which we do not have the manifest. We only have the Dex executable. So in that case, if we don't have the manifest, we have no way to know if the application was actually asking for the permission or not. So we didn't count it. So that's why the stats looks a bit strange in that case. So as I said, permissions not reliable first because, well, you can request a permission and not actually use it. Second, uh, it's because of the way I have computed the stats and the way I have built the data sets. I don't have manifests in all cases. And then, of course, for hackers, well, we can bypass permissions. I'm sure you know that, right? We can use, an, uh, if we want to access internet, for instance, well, we can uh, invoke the browser or some other uh, application that has the right to access internet. We can uh, escalate privileges while we are updating an application. There were some issues on that at some time. There was also, I can't remember if it was beginning of this year or not, another uh, issue on uh, hijacking the Android installer. So you thought you were installing this application, but just actually before it got installed, it was another one. And of course, you can use exploits. So permissions, not that reliable. Now, as for malware authors, so who do they want to target? 
well, the most, as many people as possible, as we'll see. So we have another property um, that is called the target SDK, so it will say uh, which uh, kind of Android uh, the, the application is for. And we have, if we have a look at that, we see that on average, malware will be targeting gingerbread, which is something like Android uh, 3 something, whereas clean applications will rather target on average jelly bean, which is above like 4, it's not remember if it's 4, 0, or 4, so that 4, something like that. Okay, so it makes sense because uh, malware authors want to target as much people as possible. This, those stats are, yeah, um, it's the best I could come up with, but uh, perhaps they're not uh, that re reliable again, because only actually very few applications provide that target SDK. Out of the million of Android and malware that I had, only 7,000 actually provided the Android SDK. So it's a bit difficult to make as real, reliable stats over there than for the others. Geography. Who are they targeting? Well, it looks like they are targeting China, US, Russia, plenty of things. But geographic attribution for Android malware and for any malware, it's always difficult. So how did I do that? Well, in the Android applications, we've got a certificate. And in that certificate, of course, you've got the identity of the issuer um, of the subject, and we, I can count the country out of that. And say, probably it is targeting this country or it is coming from this country. I built up a script there to grab all the certificates and um, find out which are the countries which were yeah, uh, in the, concerned by the, the, the certificates. But it's quite difficult because you've got to rule out plenty of cases. Like I found, uh, you know, there are so many dummy entries, people putting, I don't know, GF or RK or RQ as um, a country code. Uh, there's no country for those. Um, I also found at some point, um, yeah, that entry about Vanuatu, and I thought, oh, that's, uh, it's strange that I have so many hits for, for that country, had a look at it, and you no, know, there was VU in all entries, so it was probably fake. So I had to rule that out. Um, so in the end, I actually ruled out like 63% uh, of all uh, the certificates I had. I also ruled out all um, the development or debug certificates for Android, so all the ones which are issued to Google most of the time that you see in each team, in each case when you're you know, starting to build your application. In the end, so out of um, the 600,000 certificates I started with the, the, at the beginning, I end up, ended up with only 150,000 certificates which had a country that looked like it was, you know, meaningful, not uh, uh, pure crap. And again, yeah, it's really pretty t tricky afterwards to attribute it to the right country. There were so many cases I had to have, uh, have a look at the results to, to make sure it would be okay. Um, it seems that you know, so many developers are entering that country wrong. It, you know, it annoyed me very much because they had people, instead of uh, putting the country to letter code, they're putting the call code. So, well, 86 for China, for instance. So I had to put that back in the, put that in the script special rule. Um, there are people who are putting uh, names of um, of towns or states or things like that in the country. So that helped me very much improve my geography skills. That's how I learned that Kweru, for instance, is in Zimbabwe. I didn't know that before. Um, there are also some errors, like uh, at some time I came up, you know, uh, for the thumb countries which are targeted, and there was like maybe third country or something like that. 
Switzerland. I thought, gosh, why Switzerland? I mean, it's not an enormous country. They're not renowned for you know, either spreading or being that targeted by malware. So I found it strange, had a look at my script, and then I saw, well, all the entries actually that the country code was CH, but obviously it was understood as an, uh, uh, an abbreviation for China. So again, had to modify my script at that one. At some other time I had, uh, oh, Guernsey also uh, popping up in the top countries. I thought, wow, Guernsey again, that really strange. I didn't know there was a hacker community so strong over there. And it was just because I had a bad regular expression in my script and I was picking, up, picking it up for a GG um, minus two. Plenty of errors like that, I, I turned out to, to have the script. So then the, the, other issue, the other issue we have to discuss there is, well, is that um, country which is in the certificate, is it reliable and is it the country of, uh, which is targeted or the country of origin? Um, the best bet is that it's the country which is targeted because there's some use to put the real country there so, to, so as to make sure that the Android application will actually be able to run in that country. But it really seems that in some cases, uh, the malware author did put some uh, reliable information about himself or herself. So we have, for instance, a student in Mumbai where we have, you know, all the details, they seem to be right. The zip code is correct. They put the zip code instead of the, the country. Uh, but it's correct. Why would they be doing that? To, for fame, possibly, because they don't believe that their application is malicious. Perhaps it depends on, you know, laws or points of view. Um, to make it more difficult for us to do some correct attribution, it's possible as well. Or maybe because their original application was Trojans, and in that case, well, the, the person who Trojaned it would retain the same certificate and just inject some malicious code inside, that's possible. So I can't say if it's really countries where the malware origin from came come from or if they're targeting, it's a mixture of both as you'll see. So presumed targets of all those uh, malware I could gather the country from, while well, the first country to, uh, um, with, um, that comes for us is Russia with um, 65,000 uh, malware from there. Then it's the USA, 40,000, China, 30,000, and then quite low behind some other countries, such as, a bit surprising perhaps, United Kingdom, Vietnam, India, and Australia. Okay, this is for uh, all malware since Android malware exists, so like um, starting 2009 or something like that. If we have a look at some other stats and only take for particular years, well, it's a bit different. We see some evolution, actually. In 2014, the first country to come up, to pop up first is China, then it's the US, then it's UK, then Russia, and then Vietnam. And very, uh, very low behind some other countries, which are Australia, Switzerland, Italy, Indian, Spain, Singapore, and then uh, loads of other countries. France actually, in that list, came like the 22nd. So it's not that high, but not in the really uh, lower ones either. And for 2015, uh, well, I only have the stats for the first quarter of 2015 for those. It seems, it seems, if it will be confirmed or not, that the first one is China, and then very far behind US and the rest of the world. Some other countries popped up as Ukraine, Japan, Belarus. Um, those are some uh, other countries um, which we hadn't seen that much before. Okay, so that's where they come from. So now, malware authors, what are they looking for? Well, I, our secrets, of course. Okay? 
So same kind of figure as the other one. When you see um, a flashy red, it means that malware are really interested by that. And when it's green, it's more clean applications which are interested by that. And what we see there is that, for instance, they are very much interested in IMEI, IMSI, uh, the SIM operator uh, code. Um, they are also malware interested by the model of your phone, but actually everybody is clean as well. Um, plenty of interesting information like that. I'd say that the IMEI and the IMSI and the phone number, everybody had expected that Android malware would be, would like to get those, right? It's like Captain Obvious. What perhaps is not that obvious is, again, the difference between malware and clean applications. I mean, I had expected malware to be interested in my phone number, but I hadn't expected them to be six times more interested in my phone number than clean applications. That came as a surprise. MAC address, twice, um, listing other applications on the phone, four times more interested in that. That, I mean, the, the, that's really a significance there. Some other surprises, I thought they would be interested in my GPS coordinates. They are, 22% are interested in this but clean applications as well. So there's no difference here between clean and malware, okay? Getting my email address, 9% um, of malware only compared to 13% of clean applications. So that confirms what I said earlier, that malware were not that interested in emails. That's maybe a little bit of surprise because emails can be valuable for spam lists or whatever. And if we add up all that information that they are grabbing and we pile that up, well, we see obviously that malware are trying to get far more uh, information than clean applications. Um, we can also compare it with um, F-Droid repository. That repository is um, a bit particular because it only hosts free and open source uh, uh, Android applications. And just out of curiosity, I ran the stats on that particular marketplace. And it seems that those are, you know, uh, cleaner in a way that they are grabbing less information than even the clean ones, the, the clean data set that I have. So, Profiling about the skills, we'll see that actually it looks like um, malware authors are quite good at, let's say, high-level development, but are not so keen on low-level ones. I, I gathered statistics about plenty of properties about various techniques they would be using. So that's like a panel of uh, those properties. We have, for instance, reflection, encryption, um, using that special class in Android, which is called Dex Class Loader, which will help you load some other Dalvik executables, um, hiding applications, um, issuing some commands with, um, you know, su super user um, prefixed as before, uh, trying to install another app using the command line, line uh, PM install, and then the APK, detecting they are running on an Android emulator or not, all that kind of stuff. And I got the percentages of um, Android packages, Android malware, which are using that technique, and those uh, that clean applications are using the most. So that's the spider web that it gets. So basically, we can say that, for instance, um, yeah, using the su command, for instance, well, it's 10% of uh, malware compared to something like 8% of clean applications which are using that. So what do we make out of it? Well, the thing that I make out of that is that they do not seem to be Unix geeks because 
they, they're not using that much compared to clean applications, those Unix commands such as to chmod, mount, or even, you know, packages, busybox, things like that. Um, it's less than 2% of cases most of the time. They are not detecting that they are running on the emulator, which can be done quite easily by finding some properties on the emulator, looking for, you know, special QMU uh, uh, strings, things like that. They are not uh, using command line to install applications. Well, some of them are, but it's not in general what they are doing. They are not either, and that's very good for us as a malware analyst, as me, um, they are not using that much uh, native development. So we don't see a lot of use of GNI. That's, well, 23% is pretty much, but in uh, clean applications as well. So not particularly more for malware or for clean, it's like basically the same. When the, they are not that much either you know, trying to run uh, native execu executables by that special call runtime.exec, thing like that, there's no significant, uh, significant difference there. But what they really show interest in is, um, well, they show that they are skilled in the way uh, to use the Android SDK. They will be using a board broadcast in a way probably it hadn't been anticipated before to conceal, for instance, SMS messages. They will be using classes which are less known, like Dex class loader. They will be hiding icons of the applications. Also surprising, perhaps they're, um, they're coming from the web world and they like web development because we see quite a few of them um, trying to use JavaScript. 23% uh, of malware are, are trying to enable or embedding pages with JavaScript where it's, you know, less than 1% in clean. I mean, uh, okay, those are only stats, but um, there can't be a gap like that without some significance behind it. It has to be uh, saying something about the, the people which are coding it. Surprises again, because, well, I don't have answer for all the numbers and all the figures I present. Uh, I was surprised to see reflection and encryption with such a high uh, level of percentage. 70% of malware are using reflection, and clean are still using it pretty much. Maybe that is because it's an old technique, and you know, all Java developers know about reflection. Or I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. What is really very strange is also to see that there are some clean applications which are using um, APIs such as open text file or load text file. Open text file is private. It's, um, it's an, I'd say, a security issue in one way, or it can be at least, because you can load another Delvic executable uh, without warning the, the end user, and clean applications are using that. What the fuck? Obfuscation. Well, obfuscation, of course. Uh, we expect malware to be using obf obfuscation. So I measured um, how much they were using various obfuscation techniques. One of the most trivial technique is to insert some, some, sorry, some uh, no, no operation in the Dalvik byte code so as to make it probably a little bit more difficult to disassemble. Well, that technique is used by, let's say, everybody, so it's not really meaningful. The um, basic obfuscation which is used by, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, proposed by ProGuard, and which renames all the classes into A, B, C, D, this as well is used in many cases. It's like above, well, 20% 20, 20 of applications which are using that. Then I also had uh, a property which is, uh, which is triggered on a 
particular uh, obfuscation technique which was demonstrated in, in 2012 uh, by Thuxter, that's his uh, Twitter handle, Peter Schultz I think is his name. Um, and well, it's very interesting uh, technique there, uh, but it only happens in 0.5% of malware, so very few. I saw it it's still because in uh, it's still in 5,000 cases in 2013, so that's pretty much 5,000 malware using that particular technique. But then it stopped. I haven't seen it at all in 2014 and not in 2015. Of course, we've got to be cautious because um, year attribution is always difficult. It's not because the, the certificate says it's in 2014 or the zip says it was created in 2014, that it was, okay? And um, APK, APK Protect is another obfuscator, quite advanced one as a matter of fact. Well, it's used in less than 1% of Android malware that we have in 2014. So I would have expected it to be a bit, you know, higher than that. As I would have expected it to be more, well, higher, I, ha I thought, well, okay, Excel, are you right, or are your properties really right, or are you doing something wrong? I checked it. I have some properties which are reliable, for instance, detecting the NOPs, detecting APK protect, or detecting that particular uh, liner sweep abuse of a tungster. It's the, the detector is working and it's accurate. I don't think I have any errors on that. Um, the way I detect basic obfuscation using ProGuard though, well, it's not as good. I'm probably missing some cases. So I said it was like 25%, maybe it's 30, maybe it's 35. I would have to, to work on this to have a better property detector. And the other thing which also, you know, um, kind of bothered me is that I discussed with another uh, malware analyst, Robert Lebowski, uh, a year ago, and he told me, well, uh, abusing liner sweep, uh, we, have mal we have something like 30% of malware doing it, and I have less than 2% of malware doing it. So, I mean, 2%, 30, who's right there? And I know that Robert is a reliable guy, so something is probably there, uh, there there's an issue there. Um, I can always be missing a few cases, but it seems to me that his 30% is a bit too high as, uh, as we are also exchanging samples, so there's something wrong about that. Some other techniques, well, it looks like you know, malware authors um, are perhaps a little bit more technology savvy than others. I had a look at the, cert the hashing algorithms which were used in the certificates, and it's, well, it's really kind of a side note, but it's interesting to see that some um, non-null percentage of uh, clean applications are still using MD5. I hate MD5, it's, uh, it's crap, but it's still there. and. Um, Luckily or not luckily, uh, malware are using MD5 far less. And if we compare again with F-Droid, well, F-Droid is even better. I have no actions with uh, F-Droid. I'm not affiliated, but still, uh, they, they are using the latest uh, SHA-255-56 <laughs> uh, algorithm, um, which is not that much used by the other uh, malware or clean applications. Exploits. Well, of course, I had to build some um, properties and uh, detectors for exploits to see how much that would be used in malware. Um, I did that. I did, tech, I did um, build some detectors for specific exploits like Rage in the Cage, Levitator, Mempodroid. Well, um, my detectors are crap, so I'm not going to present the statistics about that. I obviously have to recode them. 
Luckily, fortunately, my, um, my detector, my generic detector is working well. I checked that one and it looks like um, exploits from a generic point of view are used in less than 2% of malware. Okay, so that's interesting, I, I hope, for you guys, because in security communities, I often have people telling me, oh, exploits are, you know, people like these things. Um, malware authors are using things which are really skilled, very uh, uh, technological, things like that. Well, uh, it's not true. From a statistics point of view, it is not true. Less than 2% of applications are doing things which are, you know, a little bit more advanced than, than we think. Same thing, I, had, I have some other properties that are detecting the use or the, the thing that malware are searching for some specific applications which are used for uh, when you've got an Android, a rooted platform. So we have properties for detecting uh, malware which are trying to do something if you have a Cyanogen platform, which is like, you know, uh, an alternative or some other um, applications which are used um, to grant uh, permissions to this or that application and which are only used on rooted platforms. And again, it's only less than 2% of applications uh, malware which are using this, which perhaps comes a little bit of a surprise. So it really means somewhere that actually malware authors, they're not using so difficult tricks in their applications, in, their, in what they're spreading. They are not because easy things works also pretty, pretty well. So yeah, I won't keep you too much from eating. Um, it's nearly the last slide, I think so. Um, just as a recap, well, those are stats on a million of malware. However, some particular stats I have, as I have highlighted, uh, are more difficult to spot or to get accurately, so there are um, less samples than this. Still, at least, uh, you know, there are on hundreds of thousands of, uh, of malware, which is pretty much. Also, another thing we can you know, keep in mind is that uh, malware are not as complicated as we think they are. Um, from a statistics point of view, they're, they're usually rather simple. They are not using that much the fact that an uh, um, a phone would be rooted or not. They are not using Unix commands that much. Um, they are written, it is true, by skilled Android developers, but you know, not really low-level dev, no not so much uh, native developments. Um, that, that's things they like. Why? Well, because they're interested in money, and if you get money with simple schemes, you don't need to build up complicated ones, right? So that's why, as well, we see in the beginning that malware are smaller than uh, clean applications. What they like to do, well, they like very much to read or send an SMS. They like to grab IMEI or phone number. And there's a significant uh, difference uh, to, uh, compared to um, those clean applications for that. They really like to spread more and to, to, to exploit more sensitive data than those clean applications. That's really something that will identify malware. As for geographic attribution, well, it looks like countries like China, Russia, USA, and others are top targets, but it's difficult to attribute um, malware to uh, some countries or not. And that's all. Um, you've got my contact information. Um, I'll, have, I'll uh, thank actually my husband who, who worked on Sherlock Droid with me and helped uh, achieve those uh, statistics. And you've got plenty of other links there, down there, um, if you want to, to look more into 
how those properties were computed, or if you want more details. Anyway, I'm available. And if you've got questions. <laughs>